What's up guys, GT here and in this video I'm going to show you some handy keyboard shortcuts that can really help you to improve your overall workflow inside the Axe Edit software. But before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out. No, I want to give a huge shout out to James McCall and Christian Petrascu, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, who have made a second contribution, yes folks, second contribution towards the channel. So thank you so much for that guys, you guys are absolute legends. And in case you are wondering how you can support the channel and support me, check the links in the description box below. All right, let's jump into the Axe Edit software and check out some of these handy keyboard shortcuts. All right, folks, so I've got Axe Edit as always in front of me. And this time we are on a stock preset called Bright Plate. This is preset number 299. I'm really digging this preset and this is how it sounds on my guitar. reverb in there but none of that really matters right this video is not about tone and all about settings this video is about how you can use your keyboard so i'm going to keep my guitar away and we're going to resume this from there a few moments later now keep in mind that obviously just like with any other software in any operating system whether it be it windows or mac you can't pretty much do everything with the keyboard there are things which you can do with the mouse there are things which you can do with the keyboard but i pretty much need both of them at any given point in time that when i'm dialing in tone but keep in mind that the keyboard can be used to you know uh do most of the things in there but there are things there are there are limitations which i will call out as i'm showing you examples but you would need your mouse as well but think of it this in, in this scenario right you having a laptop and you've got a trackpad in there which is obviously quite hard to manipulate uh you know given given that it's small and you have to use two fingers and you've got your guitar in your hand as well you're dialing in tone that's where i think the keyboard can come really handy so let's start with the basics the real basics you can use your arrow keys to actually navigate around the grid block here so if you start using your left and right arrow keys you will see that you will have this sort of a golden square uh, of selection kind of showing up on the grid, which you can pretty much move around anywhere inside the grid. The only quirk with this one, and I'll explain why it works this way, is that when you move over and you know land on a specific block for example you will stop having that interaction with the arrow key and i'll explain why this happens but just in case you want to resume that thing again and you want to you know jump over to a different block you landed on this block by accident you can press the f5 key to refresh the preset this is only refreshing the grid it's not you're not going to lose your changes if you have any changes in the preset at the moment it's not resetting the preset that's a different shortcut i'll come to that later so again back to that same spot again you can now navigate and choose any block you want i'm going to go on to the amp block and i'm going to sit there because that's one of the pages which has a lot of settings and i can show you a lot of options here so once you are on any particular block, you can press the space bar, the biggest key on your keyboard to bypass any of the particular blocks. I find this quite handy when I'm, you know, jamming and I'm trying to create a tone and I want to switch off the reverb. I just press the space bar and it kind of switches it off. Next up, if you have any block which has the X and Y modes in there, you can pretty much switch between them using the X keyboard command. So if you press X once, it jumps to the Y mode. Press X again, it'll jump back to the X mode again. Keep in mind that this is only possible with blocks which have the X and Y option available. So obviously you can't do this with a block like the compressor block, for example. Now, coming back to that earlier thing that I said that once you land on a block, you can't use the key row, uh, you can't use the keyboard arrow keys to navigate to another block. There's a reason for that. And the reason is that now you see that the focus is kind of shifted down here to this uh, parameter section. What do I mean by focus? So if you've ever filled up a web form or, you know, have you filled up a form online uh, over the internet, you will have these specific text fields and you can jump to any text field by clicking on it. And that text field kind of gains focus and you, whenever you type, you type in that text box. So that's what I mean by focus. You see this dotted 
rectangle sort of a thing over the input drive that's your focus box that's telling axe edit software that this particular parameter is in focus right now and now if you use your up and down arrow keys you will see that you are now manipulating the uh, input drive in this case you could be in manipulating anything else to be honest but in this case you're manipulating the input drive and you're pushing it by up and down by 0.1 in this case uh, but let's say you want to jump to eight from two obviously that's a lot of you know up arrow clicks what you can do is press the enter key that's going to bring up the editing mode which is going to allow you to enter any specific value that you want now let's say you want to jump to eight you can just you know hit eight on your keyboard and press the enter key again it's going to commit that value and now your input drive is back at eight now as i said earlier you can press f5 to refresh the preset it's not going to you know remove any of your changes it's going to keep them at all times so don't worry about that all right you might ask this question hey gd what if i want to you know edit the mid value or the treble value Good question. You can use the tab key just like any web form. If you've ever used the tab key on online or any of the Windows softwares, you can use the tab key to navigate to other parameters in this particular section. So if I keep pressing it, you'll keep saying that that rectangle, that dotted white rectangle is shifting itself from one place to the other. And if I keep pressing it, it's going to move across all the different sections and come back to the input drive again. Now keep in mind that I could not find a way to navigate to these kind of pages, uh, you know, uh, section, if you want to call it. Uh, I could not find a way to do that. And as I said, there are limitations to what you can do. So you will have to use your mouse to pretty much come to and switch the sections. But the good part is once you switch the section, you again have that dotted white rectangle coming up, which is going to help you move to any particular place. Uh, if you want to switch on and off switches you can do that pretty much by using the up arrow key or the enter key as well to kind of turn on or off any switches and in case you want to traverse backwards and not forwards and this is applicable to both mac and windows you can use shift plus tab to kind of reverse traverse the different parameters inside any given block and i say any given block this will work with any given blocks for example you want to work with the compressor you will have the same thing working over there as well. It will navigate through all of the different parameters. All right, coming back, let's look at some other basic features that are pretty much available in almost every Windows program. So you have your cut, copy, and paste, which are pretty handy sort of commands that I use all the time. I'm from a programming background, so I use them quite a lot. We pretty much copy and paste all of the code from somewhere else. <laughs> Just kidding. So you say control C on any particular block. It's going to copy that over to the memory. You can use your mouse or F5 and refresh the preset and go to another block, uh, another slot in the grid and press control V. It's going to paste that particular block in there. Now, keep in mind that it already knew that I have AMP1 used already. So when I pasted, it actually pasted it as another second block, which is AMP2 in this case. Now, here's a feature which I feel that the Axe Edit 2 should have and it doesn't have, which is undo. You can't undo in the Axe Fix 2 or I don't know if Axe Fix 3 has it. Can one of you guys let me know if Axe Fix 3 has or Axe Edit 3 has an undo feature? I don't think Axe Fix 2 or Axe Edit 2 has it. But if you want to remove this block, you can do that by pressing the delete key. Now, this one is pretty handy. It kind of deletes the key, uh, deletes the block and also removes all connections as well, which is pretty good. Let me show you how I can do that again. Let's just go ahead and add, uh, you know, another uh, reverb block on top here and I'm going to connect it over here. Setting doesn't matter. I'm going to select that block again and I'm going to press the delete key. Now look what happens. It connects, it disconnects the block and deletes the block as well. I find this pretty handy and I use it all the time. As I was mentioning, you can pretty much do control X as well, which is to, uh, you know, cut a block and paste it somewhere else. By the way, if you're a Mac user, you can replace the control with the command key, which is going to be pretty much, uh, you know, a universal replacement of the control key in the Mac OS. So I'm 100% sure I don't have a Mac OS, but with the command key, the most of the commands should be kind of easily transposable to the 
Mac OS. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, now let's move ahead and see some of the other things that you can do with the blocks. So once I'm on any particular block and I want to save this to the blocks library, there's a very good shortcut, which is control and B, which will bring up the block libraries pop-up which you can you know pretty much use and save it as a block into your blocks library if you want to pretty handy again uh, I haven't used it too much but can be helpful if you're trying to save blocks to be honest into the blocks library again next thing I want to show you is how to delink blocks now this is something um, which you probably might want to do in a case where you don't want to remove the block from the grid. Maybe you're experimenting and you're trying out stuff and you want to delink the block and you want to see, you know, how the tone sounds. So let's jump back to that same example that I had earlier. Let's put up another reverb block in parallel here. And now you could actually select that and say control D. What that's going to do is keep the block in there, but it's just going to disconnect it. Now, as I said, there is no way to actually add or link more blocks using just the keyboard. It's just a limitation that I find which you have to and have to use your mouse. All right, let's move forward. Let's delete this guy and let's get back to the main state that we were in. All right, let's move on to other shortcuts which are slightly more advanced in nature. You can actually switch scenes as well using your keyboard. So just press control and the number of the scene that you want to go to. You have eight scenes there. So if I want to go to scene number two, I press control and two, it's going to jump to scene number two. And if I want to go to scene number eight, I can press control and eight and it's going to jump there to scene number eight as well. All right, back to scene one. If you are using templates and if you don't know what templates are, you can check out my other video about tips and tricks on the XFX uh, edit workflow that I made earlier on the channel. I'll link it up here, here, which side, here. Anyways, so just press Control and N, that's going to bring up the pop-up for your templates. Now I've got two templates saved here, and this is a quick way to actually save you some clicks and just start a preset from scratch if you are load up your favorite settings if you have saved that as a template. Now let's look at another thing, which is how you can save this as a template as well. There's another shortcut to do that. This is slightly more complex, so you're getting into multiple key combinations here now. So if you say Control plus Shift plus T, that's going to bring up the save as a template option for you, which you can use to pretty much save the particular preset as a template. Another handy little keyboard shortcut if you are into templates. Now, what if I have changed the preset quite a lot and I want to save the preset? A simple shortcut, Control plus S or Command plus S to be honest, and uh, that's going to save your preset if you have any edited changes. But if you have any edited changes and you want to discard them and you want to reset the preset back to where it was, you can use Control plus Shift plus F12. That's going to reset the preset. Now, this is different from refreshing the preset. Keep in mind, refreshing just refreshes the grid. Uh, I think uh, resetting the whole preset means that you are reverting it back to what it was saved as earlier on your disk. All right, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed these keyboard shortcuts and let me know in the comments guide, what, are you guys using these already? If you're not, then which ones are more helpful to you in terms of dialing in your tone? And if you're an AxeFX 3 user, let me know, or an AX8 user as well, let me know if these shortcuts work for you as well. As always, I shall see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe guys, keep rocking. Cheers, bye-bye.